Hi, my name is Heidi Hisrick, and today I'm going to teach you the bones of the skull using my buddy Lucy here, um, or at least Lucy's head, because that's all I really need for today. Luckily, Lucy's head comes off his body with no problem, and yes, Lucy is a dude, but that's a story for another time. If you haven't already print, printed the handout that comes with this video, you should go ahead and do that. It's in the description of the video below. So take a moment to print it out and hopefully you have some colored pencils or crayons so that you can color as we go through this. This is the first of several videos in which we will be touring the bones of the human body. So if you like this one, make sure to look for the others as well. So the first thing we're going to talk about is sutures, and you can see the sutures on Lucy's skull. If you look up the word suture, it means to stitch together, so to stitch two things together. And that's really what sutures are in the skull too, they're just stitching together the bones of the skull. So we tend to think of our skull as being a single bone, but it's really made of many bones that over time have fused together if you're an adult. And if you're a kid, they're still fusing together until you're about 20 years old when those sutures are completely firm and stiff and no longer, uh, the bones are no longer distinct and separate. You may have heard that when you're born, you have more bones than you have when you get older. And that's true. And part of why is because this does fuse together over time so that many bones actually fuse into what seems like a single bone. Go ahead and highlight where you see the sutures on your handout. And you probably know that babies are born with a soft spot. The soft spot is actually between these two bones, so this is very soft at birth, and this bone right here in the front actually has a gap between the two bones as well. So there's a big soft spot right here when a baby's born. And a big reason why we have sutures is so that our huge human heads can fit through the birth canal. They can sort of squeeze and morph and change shape. And sometimes babies are born with their heads looking kind of weird and pointy because of how they get squeezed through the birth canal. But if we didn't have the ability to have the skull kind of flex as it comes through, then we would have a lot more maternal fatalities and um, infant fatalities because it couldn't fit through. It's kind of weird to think of, but your sutures are actually joints. So we think of joints as things that, that allow movement. And that's true for many joints like the, the jaw here. But these are joints too. They're immovable or fibrous joints, which my students you'll be learning about uh, in upcoming lessons. When a forensic anthropologist examines the skull of an unknown dead person, they can look at things like the sutures and how fused they are and use it to some extent to figure out how old the person was. Since these don't fully fuse until you're 20, if they're not fully fused, they can figure out you might have been a juvenile, for example. Thanks, baby. Will you pull me out one? So remember to shade in each bone as we go through it. I'm going to start with this part, the lower jaw, and that is called the mandible. So on yourself, feel your chin. Your chin is part of your mandible and all up along here. This is all mandible. So your lower teeth all fit into your mandible and the mandible connects to the rest of the skull with a movable joint. So this is a synovial joint or a fully movable joint. It's a hinge like a door. And again, we'll get into joints later, but that's the only movable joint in the skull. So I think that is pretty cool. Mandible comes from a Latin term meaning jawbone. So that's its etymology. Next, we'll look at the maxilla. So the maxilla runs up the sides of your nose. If you feel right here and you squeeze, that's part of your maxilla. And it comes all the way down all along your upper lip and all of your upper teeth are attached to your maxilla. So a dentist really works with the maxilla and the mandible and the teeth that are growing out of those two bones of the skull. Maxilla also comes from Latin and it means jaw. Now 
Next is the nasal bone, and nasal probably makes you think nose, which it should, but most of your nose is cartilage, which is why in a skull it looks like this. The nasal bone is just this small amount of bone that's at the top of the nose. So if you press right here, it's very hard. This is your nasal bone. And on Lucy, it's just this tiny bit right here. You can see the sutures on either side and above. The next bone is huge. It's your frontal bone. And this is part of how I know Lucy's a dude because Lucy has brow ridges, but we'll get into that later. So your frontal bone is all above your eyes, feel up here your forehead. Your whole forehead is frontal bone. And it actually runs up to about where my sunglasses are or where you might have a headband. And then down along the sides. So all of this is frontal bone. Next is the parietal bone. And you definitely want to pick a color that you like because the parietal bone is huge. It starts posterior to the frontal bone, so this is frontal, and you can see the parietal bone runs all the way back to here, and it's split. It's split into two sides, but both of those are parietal bones. So you have parietal on the left and parietal on the right, and then at the base we can see another suture here where the next bone begins. This is all parietal, and the word parietal, its etymology means wall. So I remember that the parietal bone is the one with like a wall running all down the center of it. Feel the top of your head. So up here is parietal, right at the very top if someone pats you on the head. And then all the way in the back to about here, this is all parietal. And then we're going to get into a different bone back here and over to the sides. Now we'll do the temporal bone. You also have a temporal bone on each side, just like you do a parietal bone. It is posterior to the frontal bone. It's inferior to the parietal bone below it. And if you press right above your ear, if you press right behind your ear, and if you press right here, this sharpness right here, that's all part of your temporal bone. Your temporal bone has a little piece that goes right here, oh, right there, and that's called your zygomatic process. And the zygomatic process is actually part of the temporal bone. The etymology of zygomatic is cool. It comes from a Greek word, yoke, uh, like the yoke between two oxen pulling a cart. And you can see it's sort of shaped like that piece of wood that they use to connect two oxen. Now we'll do the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone is different from the zygomatic process. So you can see the zygomatic bone on Lucy. It's on both sides. So if you press to at the base of your eye over to the side laterally and uh, inferior sort of to the eye, this is the zygomatic bone. Okay, I really like the sphenoid. The sphenoid is cool. First of all, it's fun to say sphenoid. Um, but secondly, the shape of it is really neat. It's described as butterfly shaped, but you can't see a lot of it because it's deeper than these other bones, which are more superficial. So I'm going to show you a picture of what the sphenoid bone looks like if you cut away all the other bones of the skull. So did you see how it's shaped like a butterfly? It's pretty cool. You can see a little bit of the sphenoid in the back of the eyeballs, the orbits of the eye. But in our diagram, since we have a lateral view of the skull, you can only see the sphenoid right here tucked in between the frontal bone, the temporal bone, and the parietal bone. There's a little section of sphenoid that's visible. The final bone we're going to learn today is the occipital bone. And the occipital bone is the back of the skull. So you can see the parietal bones meet here, and uh, inferior and posterior to the parietal bones are, is the occipital. There's just one occipital, it's a fully fused bone. So if you feel the back of your head, the base of your skull, right above your neck, this is your occipital bone. You can probably feel a little bit of a bump right here, more if you are male. Um, and that's the external occipital protuberance, which is cool, it's used in forensic anthropology. So that's the final bone that you guys are gonna learn for the skull.
I will have several more videos about the skull. Eventually we're gonna to get to the brain. And if you learn the bones, it's cool because the lobes of the brain are named for the bones of the skull. So it's easy to remember the lobes of the brain if you know the bones of the skull. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Lucy's skull and your own skull. Remember to look for other videos about bones. Bones are probably my favorite body tissue, although blood's pretty amazing too. But I hope that you love bones as much as I do and enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for tuning in.